Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Crystal with Emerson Aurora Design, and today I'm going to show you how I made this Art Deco inspired cup. I started with a 25 ounce straight duo tumbler from Stainless Depot. I wa sanded, washed, and spray painted gold. I'm going to use this um, gold mica that I bought on AliExpress. I'm going to mix it into some resin. Um, I'm going to apply that mica with mixed in with the resin as a base color for my cup. This mica, when it's mixed with the, the resin, is like liquid gold. It's so pretty. Um, I use quite a bit here because I want to have good coverage. And uh, you'll see me adding that here in a minute. I'm just adding probably about 20 mLs of um, resin to this cup. This will be the first layer of resin on this layer here. When you're adding mica, you want to make sure you mix it up really well so that it doesn't cause streaking. I'm going to apply this to my cup. Um, it is kind of thick. The mica really does make that resin thicken up. And you can see how pretty that gold is. It looks just like a liquid gold. Um, as I apply this mica, it will leave kind of like a streaking pattern. Um, and you'll see how I try to fix that here in a bit. But I'm okay with that. This is the base layer of a peekaboo. And um, I do want a little bit of movement in that mica. So you'll see how I remedy that with my heat gun. So I'm just rubbing my finger down in a swirl pattern to break up some of those lines. And when, um, by adding the heat to the cup, it will allow that mica and resin to kind of move. And it, um, all those lines kind of work themselves out as the cup turns. So after that resin cured fully, I'm on to my template here. I cut this out um, using a pattern that I purchased on Etsy. I can leave that link in the description below. I made my own um, template based on a um, digital scrapbook paper. And if anyone's interested in me um, doing a tutorial on how to um, you know, make my designs for my cups, how I make my designs for my cups, let me know and I can do a, um, a series of that. I know it's hard to tell right now that what the template's going to look like, but you'll see here in a minute. I'm going to reverse weed this. This is a very detailed template and it has the Art Deco fan pattern. So I'm going to take my contact paper here that I have um, it's Duck Brand contact paper that I purchased on a roll from Walmart. And I'm just going to place it over my already cut vinyl there. Um, this is a peekaboo pattern, 
um, so I'm using removable vinyl, so it doesn't really matter what color you use. I just chose yellow because I don't really use it on anything else. So I'm really scraping this down because I'm going to peel up the parts of the template that I do not want that will end up being the peekaboo. Um, that'll make sense here in just a minute. It's hard to explain. But I'm going to peel that up and then I'm going to place the the backing of the contact paper over portion of the vinyl so that it isn't sticky and I don't touch it to my arm and all that. So you'll see me doing that here. So I could just do this in sections. I'm using my little weeding tool. Um, I really like these weeding tools. I purchased them on Amazon. I can leave them in the link below also. Um, you can see I kind of was struggle bussing here for a minute <laughs> until I finally got my groove um, with pulling up the vinyl. Um, so I'll let you just kind of watch this part. The trick to doing these large templates, weeding the large templates, do them in sections, you, like I'm doing here with the um, with the backing flipped over. It helps you, you know, just kind of rest your hand there, gives you leverage, and you're able to pull that vinyl up without getting it stuck to you and um, getting a bunch of lint and everything on your design. This is sticky side up, and this is how I'm weeding it. This is called reverse weeding. It's just a really good way to be able to get those tiny little details pulled up without um, struggling so bad with um, weeding it the regular conventional way. So I'm not going to bore you with me weeding this whole template. I'm going to jump ahead here in just one second. Ta-da! It was so quick, wasn't it? <laughs> just kidding. Probably took me forever to weed this, but I like these little intricate details so it didn't bother me much. So here I am, I'm laying my cup down and um, eyeballing it. <laughs> I got pretty lucky. This is a straight tumbler. It has no taper. So I was able to uh, line it up correctly and it. I got really lucky, to be honest. <laughs> so I'm just going to roll it down on the table and um, let the contact paper kind of peel up as I go. And I'm just using the warmth of my hand to kind of get that vinyl to lay flat. So as you can see, I did modify that template a little bit. I ended up cutting about a two inch um, section there and then putting in my words. I wanted to break up the fan pattern just a little bit and um, put the word je t'aime, which is French for I love you. I do not speak French. I just love that. I, this cup gives me like French art deco vibes, so that just caught my eye when I saw that. So let's go outside and spray paint this cup. This is going to be a peekaboo. So I'm going to spray paint with my two times Rust-Oleum black spray paint over that stencil. This will have a glitter over this black paint. So just do you know quick short bursts, get it as even as you can. It's fully dry now. I'm going to do the tacket method to apply my glitter. Since I'm doing a peekaboo with glitter over the stencil, I want that glitter to lay as flat as possible. It makes it easier so that I can actually peel that stencil up. I know it's hard to see this glitter, but it's called Midnight Sky from Glitter Craze. I'll leave the link in the description below. 
It's a really pretty holographic. I thought it was actually a holographic black, but you'll see here in a little bit once I do the tack it, it does actually look more navy blue or dark, dark blue. I am watering down my tack it this time. I wanted that tack it um, glue to be thin um, so that I can peel up those stencils easier. So just like with any tacket method, you want to apply a thin, even coat of tacket glue to the entire cup portion of the cup that you want glittered. In this case, I'm going to apply that glitter, or I'm sorry, that glue over the whole cup, including the bottom. I want the glitter to cover the bottom and have it be more holographic. Since I watered the glue down, it really is doing a good job of getting in between all those little intricate parts of the stencil and that was my ultimate goal. So once you're done applying the tacket, you want to let this dry completely. That glue will then be sticky or tacky and then you're going to apply your glitter. So here you can see that that glitter does look black, but when I go ahead and burnish it down, surprise, it's actually blue, but that's okay, it makes sense. I mean, it's called Midnight Sky. I was going for a black and gold theme until this glitter burnished down blue. So blue and gold goes really well together and ends up being very pretty in the end. Make sure you save your glitter that falls off before you do the tacket method, because when you burnish the glitter down, you will have some glitter fall off that is sticky and you don't want that to contaminate your, your uh, bottle of glitter. I love burnishing these cups. It's so satisfying to watch the transformation of the glitter laying flat. The holographic glitter makes this beautiful rainbow laser effect and that's what I was going for with this cup. Well, now for the fun part. Well, at least my fun part. I love peeling up peekaboos. It's one of my favorite things to do. I guess that's why I do so many peekaboos. I just feel like it's almost like a little surprise when you see it, um, the design underneath. I was trying really hard not to touch the tumbler too much. I did use removable vinyl. However, with that glitter over top of the stencil and the tacket and all that, I was really worried about um, stray pieces of glitter kind of spreading on the uh, in the areas of the stencil that I didn't want if that makes sense um, I did a pretty good job I, I really tried not to touch anything other than that vinyl when I was pulling this up so it didn't contaminate the cup um, you'll see I do have a couple little stragglers of glitter in between the patterns but ultimately at the end you don't really even notice it at all
the lighting changed here and you can really see that pretty holographic design um, up from the glitter has like a rainbow laser look and you can also tell that that glitter is most definitely blue and not black but that's okay I'm not going to lie, this was pretty tedious, but I do think that it's probably less tedious than doing a regular tan gram pattern. I haven't actually tried a tan gram yet. Um, I'm deciding if I want to or not. <laughs> this was kind of my take on it without using a bunch of different colors. The gold underneath is really pretty. You can kind of see the ripples and lines underneath the glitter um, that looks like like hammered metal almost. Um, it's just a really pretty Art Deco style and it reminds me of the old buildings in Detroit. Um, I grew up in Michigan so it's just kind of nostalgic for me. So this is the final cup after a layer of epoxy. It's so shiny and pretty and it's just this video is really not doing much justice to it hopefully the photos at the end will capture better but look at how pretty it's just so satisfying I love that fan pattern and the art deco feel to it I want to say thank you for watching my video I really appreciate all the support and love that I've been getting lately um, all the new subscribers it really makes <laughs> It really touches my heart and it makes me happy that people like to watch my um, my artwork. If you're new to my channel, I'd love for you to hit subscribe and um, tell me what you think. Give this tumbler a try. It's something different. It does take time, but I know you can do it. I hope you all have a happy and blessed day and keep on crafting, everyone. Thank you so much.